Hello and welcome to this week's edition of WCS Sports Connection Game Day. I'm your co-host Jeremy Qualls and with me is our co-host Tate Matthews. And we're excited to be here today to talk about last week's action and this upcoming week's action in the WCS Sports Conference. Uh, we're going to start off this week talking about the Brentwood versus Centennial game. And uh, what, a, what an action-packed game that was. And, uh, you know, coming into this game, Brentwood had, uh, probably has the toughest schedule in the state coming off uh, two straight losses and, and Centennial coming in with uh, two straight wins. And, man, we had a barn burner. Oh, yeah, we did. And it was, um, without a doubt, probably the most exciting game of the week. Went to overtime, as you know. Uh, Brentwood at home got, out, uh, got up on them early. Then Centennial comes back, comes down to a, uh, the, the last three big plays were field goals. Centennial had a chance to win it in regulation uh, with a field goal missed it. They go into overtime. They score a touchdown, kick the extra point. They're up by seven. Deion Sanders with his third touchdown of the, uh, of the game, which, you know, that's a name we, we're going to be talking about every oh, week, yeah. which we talked about earlier. Uh, Brentwood, they score. Touchdown pass, they go for two, which is kind of funny. Uh, that's kind of a Brian Rector deal. You know, anybody who's watched his career, he's a, you know he's usually going to go for two. Um, Brentwood goes for two to take the win instead of going into another overtime team. Another time, overtime period came up a little bit short. Very exciting game. Tough loss for the Bruins. You know, that kind of goes against, you know, you're ingrained in this, in this theory of as a coach as if you're at home, you always go for the tie, that your, your crowd and the emotions of the home game will pull you through eventually. And then on the road, you always go for the win. But we kind of did the opposite this time. And, and you know, it was an exciting game, 24-23. Uh, to 23, uh, That drops Brentwood down to 0-3 overall. Uh, still with a tough schedule to go before we even get into uh, deep into district play. 0-1 uh, in the district. Centennial goes to 3-0. And uh, uh, going to 1-0 in the district. 24-23 was your final with Brentwood and Centennial. What an exciting game. Uh, I want to touch base on something real quick again. Once again, we go into, at any given time, Brentwood could lay down and feel like we're coming to this game, the underdog. We've, we've had some tough, tough losses. And uh, they go in 14 nothing at the half. Yep. And I found that very interesting uh, with what was going on. And then eventually, like you said, uh, uh, Centennial came around second half. That may be contributed to some injuries that happened. That changes the whole dynamic of the game. I think that kind of took away their outside presence. You see Deion Sanders with 33 carries again. And, and I think one thing on that overtime period, you got to, you got to remember, in high school overtime periods, you get four downs to go 10 yards. Uh, Brentwood's game is not ground and pound. They don't have a Deion Sanders to hand it to four times in a row to get the 10 yards. So I think that was a big part into going into Coach Woodward's decision to go for two. And I don't know if you saw it, but um, uh, on a post-game interview, Coach, they asked Coach Rector about it, and he said he thought it was a great call. He'd have done the exact same thing. I thought that was pretty interesting. Yeah, and, and you touched on Deion Sanders. I mean, we were talking about 33 attempts for 127 Yards at about three, uh, three and a half, three point eight average on a carry, with three touchdowns. I mean, that was a workhorse night for him, and uh, he did a great job. And and, and they they uh, pulled off the victory in the end. Uh, what a great, exciting game! Which moves us to our next game today. Uh, uh, of last Friday was uh, Franklin going in against the first uh, district game against Dixon, and uh, that brings us to our play of the week, where uh, Joe Crislow uh, had a, a bomb. Uh, uh, here is the play of the week. Critchlow going to roll out, plenty of time. Sets his feet. He's got a wide open. I believe that's going to be that's Luke Hill, I believe, on the reception. Right. When you get that wide open, you, that ball stays up in the air a little bit longer. That was a that was a nice nice concentration on Luke's part there. He had to slow it down and collect it. You know, it's hard, coach, when you roll out to your left and you have to throw it back across that's your body. Right. Good senior presence of mind right there. Putting it down about 30, 40 yards. <laughs> See the receiver at the bottom of the screen already knows already knew it. All he had to do was catch it. Luke Hill on the big reception. 60 plus yards. Luke, careful you don't run out of bounds there, big boy. Yeah. Well, when you look at that play, what a, what a what an arm Joe Crislow has rolling out across uh, against his body, throwing on the run, about a 65-yard touchdown. Uh, you know. We talked about him. He's a senior quarterback, been starting for three years now. What a, what a threat he is, um, you know, at, at quarterback for them. And, and to be able to dial up that play, uh, great catch by Luke Hill. Um, that was a big-time play, any level. Well, uh, we had Coach Donnie Webb on last week as the, uh, as the, preview, uh, as the coach's preview show. 
And we talked about what a weapon this guy is. You know, you want your, your, your smartest player out there and talk about a, a, a general on the field for you. This kid has a plus 30 on the ACT. Right. And, and, you know, he's 6'4", and he's got a cannon for an arm. As you said, he's rolling across his body. He throws a strike. Uh, the Hill kid didn't even have to stop, you know, break stride to get there. What a fantastic play. Not only that, he was 9 for 17 for 151 yards and two touchdowns. And up until this point, uh, uh, Franklin has played two games, and he has not had a single interception. His quarterback ranking right now would be out the roof. As they, as they take into Dixon, which was kind of a question mark. We didn't know how good Dixon was, and even Coach Webb had spoken to the point of, you know, we're not exactly sure what we're going to be seeing with that. Uh, they've always predominantly been tough, and then uh, Franklin goes into a 49-13 win. Yeah. Uh, Dixon, it's just like the Williams County teams. You know Dixon County's going to have a plan. Uh, you know they're going to be prepared. They're going to play hard. And so that, that was even more impressive. It looked like they started off a little slow. The, th the thing I love about when you look at Franklin's offense right now, uh, you mentioned Joe Critchlow, uh, only 17 attempts, uh, nine of them for completions, two of those touchdowns. Between Bryce Milam and Malik Grimes, 17 carries between the both of them, four touchdowns. That means uh, these guys, they know they have to respect uh, Garrison Matthews, Luke Hill, and Joe Critchlow opening up the running lanes. Well, Bryce Milam, as you spoke of, had nine carries for 94 yards and three touchdowns. That's pretty good efficiency. Yeah, yeah, we'll take that. That's right. So uh, Franklin moves to 1-0 in the District 11 AAA as, as Dixon falls to 0-1, to and, and that puts Franklin at 2-0. Uh, some of the coaches, as I've spoken to, as the favorite in uh, 11 AAA. So uh, I know the Rebellion was out in full force, and uh, to have their four, first full game at home, and uh, a, a second home game, that is, and first uh, district game at home, and they're going to be really tough at home. They are, and uh, I saw some pictures of it on Twitter. Their first home game was, was two weeks ago against Clarksville Northeast, right. and uh, we talked about it a lot. That I, I love how these student sections are growing in all the counties around here. Rutherford County, really, uh, they really know how to do it, and we're, Ravenwood's uh, student section last year was unbelievable. Anyways, there was pictures of the rebellion on uh, at that Northeast game on, on all over Twitter last, a couple Fridays ago. And that was awesome to see, man. That was very impressive. Well, you want to talk about home a, field advantage. You want to talk about awesome. All you have to do is go to any pep rally at Franklin High School and see the rebellion in full in full form, and it was it, it'll give you chill bumps. But with that being said, our climate and culture here across WCS right now is is second to none. I mean, we've got even at Summit right now, which we'll get to a little later, uh, that may be struggling a little bit. Their their student section is so passionate yeah. about what's going on. And then I was at uh, the Marshall County game at Marshall County, uh, Marshall County against uh, Indy two weeks ago, and, and their student section was in full force in the Indy Nation out there. They're banging right. trash cans, and, and, and it was just it's great to see I love it. Uh, the student sections that we have going on in WCS. Bring, speaking of Indy, that brings us to the next game. Uh, Indy coming in at 2-0 and versus an 0-2 Summit. Uh, Summit struggling a little bit. New head coach Brian Coleman still searching for that first home win. And uh, Indy, right now, if you ask me, has the highest quality win over Marshall County than, than anybody yet in WCS. Uh, uh, what kind of game do we have there? What you expect, 48-7, uh, Independence came out and did what they were supposed to do. That's just a tough game for Summit right now. Um, you know, Independence, you, you were talking about Franklin maybe the uh, the favorite. I think Indy's right up there with them. Some people pick them, but, uh, you know, they're just playing really well. It, anybody knows anything about Scott Blade, he's a system guy. Uh, uh, and, and, and he knows that when he gets those guys playing into that system, um, they're really good, especially on offense. Andrew Bunch, uh, 10 for 12, 133 yards, three touchdowns. Um, that's over 80% completion yeah. rate. You're going to win a lot of games like that. And then, and then you've got Nate Johnson, the wide receiver. He had three touchdown receptions. That's his second week in a row of three. You know, a lot of people would be happy to score tick, six touchdowns an entire season. He scored six in two weeks. So very efficient. I'm guessing Coach Blade was happy. That's what they probably should have done in this game, and they did. Well, what I, what I witnessed at the uh, Marshall County game is, is that their defense – is, is more of a, uh, we're going to be, I wouldn't say conservative, but we're going to make sure that we're staying at home, good, solid defense, especially against a team like Marshall County that has so many weapons. And we'll get to that here in a little bit with the Marshall County Page game. But, uh, you know, they have some really, really fast, skilled athletes at, in, at Indian. Man, I, I, it's, they have an attack with two, two particular running backs that are really tough for, for, for matchups uh, as far as, as a defense preparing for, for Indy to play. Exactly. And kind of the same thing with Franklin. You got Dom Childress. Uh, I think he had eight 
carries for 94 yards. Um, you know, another big big game for him. He's a Navy commit. Um, which that's you know congratulations to him. Anytime. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Not only when you when you when you commit to one of the um, service academies, not only are you a heck of a football player, you're also a good student and, and a good citizen too. So congratulations to him. But I think it's the same kind of deal. When you have a passing attack like that, uh, you have to respect it, and it just opens up those running lanes and every you know all the, all the the thing Ravenwood Franklin and Independence all have in common. They're all spread out. But they're running out of the spread, uh, so yeah. I, I find that interesting. And then on the on vice versa on the other side of the ball, you have you know you have Summit running the wing T, and once again the wing T is a is is a, a powerful offense. Only if you're ahead right. or possibly even, you know, when you get behind, then it forces you maybe to get a little bit out of your comfort zone. And you know Summit is is young, and I love the passion, like I said, of their fans and their school. They have a great climate, a great culture. Uh, Sarah Lamb down there is doing a wonderful job. And uh, uh, Chad Kirby is the athletic director, and I know that, that that Brian Coleman and staff will eventually get there. They're starting a sophomore quarterback. Uh, they have a bunch of young guys, and they're going to be okay. But uh, as it sits right now, 48-7, Indy over Summit. Uh, Indy carries their perfect record into the next week's game. Uh, Ravenwood, 2-0, and had the bye, and uh, that will be the WCTV game of the week as Ravenwood versus Laverne uh, this coming Friday. We'll speak of it here in a minute. And uh, moving on to Fairview and Stewart County, which is a, uh, a game inside the district. And uh, Fairview, that's a high-scoring affair. Fairview oh, yeah. wins 51-27 to 27 over Stewart County. Chris Hughes' offense, high-octane. High uh, that's the way he likes to play. And, 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 and it's the kids that have bought into it. You know, we, we spoke about it a couple weeks ago. The, the, the amount of excitement that he's brought to that football program is great. So, but that, that's a big win. They, they had a, a tough loss against uh, Camden, which we knew that was going right. to be a really tough game. I, I would guess as, as the coach of Fairview, you're very excited about that. You bounce back after a tough loss. And, and, and Stewart County, uh, they're a good football team. They, they put up 60 points on somebody uh, two weeks ago. So uh, held them 51 to 27. When you look at that score, I was not at that game. 51 to 27 tells me Hunter Zimmerman must have played really well. Well, you're going in, you don't think that if you have an over-under of 78 points in a high school football <laughs> game, most of the time you're going to take the under. That's right. But Fairview uh, brings themselves to 1-1 one one in the district. We all know going in that Camden and Fairview had the, probably the favorites in that district. And uh, it'll be very interesting to see how this plays out between the two. Uh, you know, maybe Camden slips up somewhere and lets Fairview back in the picture of that. But right now, uh, uh, Camden kind of in the driver's seat in that district. I think Fairview is going to be a really, really tough group to, to hang in there with uh, going down the stretch. Moving on, Page versus Marshall. Man, what a game that was. Once again, we're talking about 78 points right here. They had 84 points, combined scored points in the Page-Marshall County game. The final there was Marshall County 54, Page 30. Page comes up short. Uh, I know that uh, Coach Bone told you that there was a lot of red zone activity that never came uh, to action for them. That's right. Well, uh, Marshall County won, like you, you, you spoke about earlier on, uh, very good football team, gave Independence all they wanted, all they wanted. Um, and so uh, they're a very good football team. Chris Walker, uh, the, the young man they have, is one of the, is one of the probably the sleeper in the mid-state. He shouldn't be a sleeper anymore, uh, but, you know, just putting up huge numbers every week. But 54-30, to 30, uh, Page was inside the 15 three times, came away with no points. Uh, gave up a kickoff return for a touchdown and, a, and an interception return for a touchdown. Both of those were the Chris Walker young man. So, you know, an athlete making plays. But you look at that, no points three times inside the 15, an interception for a touchdown, kickoff for a touchdown. They only got beat by 24 points. That's so, right. Uh, it, it's not like they weren't in this game. And, again, Marshall County is a really good football team. Well, they're very high octane. I was at the Marshall County Indy game, and I want you to know, man, they, they have athletes at every skill position they have. 6'4", 220 on the front line. Uh, Chris Walker has been offered by every uh, uh, branch of the military service so far and also been offered by every Ivy League school. This kid is, is not only just a top athlete, he's a top student athlete. And uh, I want you to know, I mean, he can fly. And he had some very uh, tremendous plays against India uh, in that game. But, uh, you know, going into that game, that's why I said that Indy, Indy had the highest quality win so far. I think the uh, the Britwood Blackman that was been our highest op opponent so far, but our highest win from WCS as it stands right now is the Indy game over Marshall County.
And when we come back, we're going to talk about week three in high school football here in WCS. Stay with us. When sharing the road, reaction time is important. Motorists should reduce their speed and avoid tailgating, especially in bad weather. When passing, they should leave at least three feet between their vehicle and the cyclist. Cyclists have the same rights and responsibilities as motorists. They should travel in the same direction on the right hand of the road and obey all traffic signals. Responsible cyclists care about the image they portray and are courteous to others with whom they share the road. Oh. Staying alert, sharing the road, and obeying traffic signals. Observing these rules provides predictability for both motorists and cyclists. Remember, same roads, same rules, same rights. And welcome back to WCS Sports Connection Game Day. I'm your co-host, Jeremy Qualls. This is Tate Matthews with me again. And as we, as we finish up last week's, a recap of last week's game, let's talk about the win of the week. The win of the week to me, obviously, was Centennial over Brentwood. What a game. Without a doubt. Overtime game, two rivals, uh, guys that coached together between Coach Woodward and Coach Rector, you know, uh, came down to a two-point conversion. Yeah, without a doubt. Without a doubt, the most exciting, and I think you're right, the best game and the best win. So as we move on into week three, man, we have a full slate of games. The majority of the games taking place outside of the district. This is kind of the final dress rehearsal, if you will, before we get into full play of uh, interleague play. Uh, let's go down our, our list of games, of, of, of upcoming games. And the first one is Brentwood at Hendersonville. We talk about it all the time. I had to keep beating a, the same drum, but uh, – Brentwood, toughest schedule in the state. Hendersonville, for those who don't remember, they were the 6A runner-up last year, uh, got beaten in the championship game against Maryville. Now, here's something to remember. Uh, Brentwood beat them last year at home. So, um, you know, we know it can be done. And, again, they're on the right track. Just keep fighting. But, man, Hendersonville, they've played three games this year. All three games they've had a running clock in the second half because they've been up by 35 uh, points. So, they run that wing tee. They got a really good quarterback who, who, who can pass the ball. So, uh, going to be tough for Brentwood. Going to be a tough game. But, hey, once again, I think he's more worried about getting – let's get better. Let's worry about us. Let's get better this game going into district. And that's right. And if you can take the – if you can take that mental capacity into interleague play, even though we may have gotten beaten up, we've played such high quality. That's you right. never know. Right there, this, this past week's game is, a, is an example of – going down to the wire with Centennial, who we'd have thought passing the eye test going in would have beaten Brentwood pretty easily. That's right. But given that fact, you know, you're playing state runner-ups and you're playing the state champions and you're doing the things that we're doing and we're playing the teams that have been playing on ESPN. <laughs> uh, you know, Hendersonville had a 48-6 win over Lebanon this past week, so it would be very, very interesting to see what happens. As we move on down the list, Centennial – versus Clarksville. Clarksville is no stranger to the WCS Sports Conference as, as several teams have played Clarksville this year. Uh, they lost 48-3 to at Rossview. What's your thoughts on Centennial Clarksville? I would think that Centennial, um, if they come out and do what they're supposed to do, um, they'll be fine. Um, Clark, Clarksville kind of in a little bit of a rebuilding period. Um, uh, it, it, they know the blueprint. Ravenwood already played them earlier in the year, beat them 42-7. to So, again, um, I know that in that game they tried to take away the pass against Ravenwood. That opened up the lanes for the Roland brothers combined for over 250-something yards and rushing three touchdowns. So, uh, obviously, they're probably going to try to take away the pass some against Centennial. Like we spoke about earlier, if you do that against Deion Sanders, it's going to be a long night for the Wildcats. Very long night. Like I said, once again, Clarksville coming in with a 48-3 loss on Rossview, and that probably doesn't bode well for the Wildcats of Clarksville coming into Centennial. Uh, moving on, Franklin at McGavick. This could be very interesting. Yes. To me, we both agree this could be uh, – this is our pick of the week as far as the game. Franklin at McGavick. And McGavick's coming off of a 49-6 to win over Glencliff. So what do you think? Um, Jay Gore, the head coach there, longtime assistant, offensive line coach for Ron Crawford at Brentwood High. Uh, Donnie Webb was the defensive coordinator all those years at Franklin under Craig Clayton. So these two guys know each other very, very well. Without a doubt, McGavick is the fastest team 
including Blackman, including Oakland later on for Brentwood. This is the fastest team anybody in Williamson County is going to face this year. So uh, they can score a lot of points. They can score fast. You know, Franklin's going to have to be even more importantly than on offense. On defense, they're going to have to be disciplined and, and, and play their assignments, gang tackle, because, again, McGavick's got about four or five guys. If you give them a seam, they're gone. So there's a lot of underlining stories in this. We yeah. have we have connections to Coach Webb on this, and they know he's a defensive guy. This is going to be an ultimate chess match with some great athletes on the field. Yeah. Be interesting to see if we can catch them off guard. Maybe Chris Lowe goes off this game, and they're not prepared for that. I think they will be. I think they're going to be looking at the pass and attack. But this is going to be a fantastic game. Yeah, that, that's if, if I was going to go watch one uh, out of district uh, this week, that's probably the one I would go to. All right, moving on down the schedule. This ought to be an interesting game as well. Uh, this is kind of this this underdog, this sleeping game that we may have overlooked. A diamond in the rough, if you will. Indy at Beach. And Beach is coming in with a big win, 41-3 to over Gallatin. I think this will be... Uh, this will this this will tell a tale for Indy. I mean, here we are. We're coming off a big, huge win against Marshall County, a quality win, and now we're going to go get and face a, a, a big opponent in Beach. So, uh, prior to going into to interleague play, this could play a part and to see where they're going to be going into interleague play. I think so too, and I think that's probably part of why they wanted this game. Uh, but Beach two and one. The, their only loss is to Henry County. I believe they lost thirty-one twenty-one to them. Henry County's the defending right. 5A state champion. Interesting, um, uh, Henry County and Beach have won four of the last five 5A state championships. So uh, that was a, a really quality opponent they lost to. So different styles. Beach is um, anybody who knows anything about Beach and Coach Crabtree, uh, they're going to be physical. They're going to run the ball probably 45, 50 times. So, again, yeah, I, I would think that um, – their game plan would be to keep Independence's offense off the field. But uh, I like Independence in this. I think, I think they're playing really well right now. And uh, that's going to be another good game. But, again, it won't be as high scoring as some of their other games. I agree. And, once again, this will set the, set the stage for Indy of how we're going to go into our interleague play. They have a, a, their schedule is, is a great schedule. He's done, Coach Blade has done a great job scheduling because we've got these high-quality opponents where you can get a win. And uh, he got that win with Marshall County. And if he gets this win, man, I'm telling you, he's looking to be – you better watch out for Andy coming into interleague yeah. play. Moving on down the schedule, we have uh, the WCTV Game of the Week homecoming for the Ravenwood uh, versus Laverne. And Laverne's coming in with a 38-17 win over Stewart's Creek, which I find interesting because uh, Ravenwood's already played Stewart's Creek, put them down pretty easily. So this is kind of a – could it be an even matchup? What do you think? I like Ravenwood in this. You know, it's homecoming, which that, that, we, we talked about there. I, that's a little early for homecoming, but I know scheduling has gotten so hard for those guys to fix that in. So uh, we spoke about that, that student section. That, that, the home side at Ravenwood will be filled with black. It'll be loud. It'll be fun. But I like Ravenwood in this. It's kind of interesting. This is where Will Hester got his uh, start. He was, his first head coaching job was at Laverne. Um, but uh, I, I, I like Ravenwood in this. I think – I don't think Laverne is going to be able to stop Ravenwood offensively. They're going to score a lot of points. Now, I will tell you, they've got one of the – they've got a sophomore running back at Laverne by the name of Malik Gray. He's already been offered by Tennessee, Alabama. I mean, everybody. He's a sophomore, so he's really, really good. They're going to have to keep him contained, but I think they will. Well, we have our own four-star that they have to contend with, and I can't wait to see Van Jefferson back in action after they had the bye week. So, uh uh, you know, I, I look for a huge game out of Ravenwood being there at home and being homecoming. Uh, it should be a great matchup. Uh, moving on down the schedule, we have Summit at West Creek. West Creek is coming in limping. Yes. They've, they've gotten beat 31-14 to Kenwood, which has a little history with us because we've had a Kenwood loss. Or, excuse me, we have beaten Kenwood in uh, our schedule this year at WCS. So uh, I look for this to be possibly uh, Summit to maybe getting off the, uh, the losing train. Yeah. This is one they need to get. You know, they, they, those kids, they need some confidence, man. They, they've been playing hard, and they have. They've played hard in every game, and they've been putting in the time. And so would love to see them have some sex, w success in this game. West Creek, um, a little bit older than Summit, but it's, one of the, it's the newest right. Montgomery County school right. system. So kind of in the same boat. Um, but, yeah, Summit needs to go up there play the well. Uh, play well in this game, and, and, and again, it, it, with that wing tee offense that they run, they cannot turn the ball over. If you turn the ball over in that one, uh, they're going to have a hard time. But if they don't, I think they got a really good chance. And uh, Coach Coleman has those kids. They're, not, they're still all in. They're going to give everything they have. So um, hopefully they can go in there and secure the ball and, and get their first win of the season. Absolutely. We're looking forward to that, hoping Summit gets off and gets their first win of the year. 
Uh, moving on down, we look at Fairview at Creekwood. This is an interleague play game for them and their district. Uh, Creekwood coming off a 28-7 loss to Hickman County. Hickman County is pretty good this year. They're kind yeah. of a sleeper team in that in that uh, in that classification, and uh, with a new a new head coach there under Michael Harrison. And I, I figure out this is going to kind of tell tell where Fairview will fall in that second tier group of teams under Fairview and Camden. So this will be an interesting matchup there against Chuck Daniels at Creekwood. Uh, what do you think? I agree with you. I think uh, Creekwood's outmatched in this. Fairview will go and uh, Creekwood, you know, traditionally um, under Chuck, Co uh, Chuck Daniels, the head coach there, uh, have been bigger, kind of a more physical. They like to run the ball a lot. Uh, not a whole lot of speed down there. As we spoke about, Fairview's going to come in there wide open. They're going to chuck that ball around the field. I, I, I think Fairview wins pretty easily in this one. Okay, and that brings us to our last section, something we've never done on the show before, Tate. <laughs> Oof. We are going to have the picks. We're going to have the prediction. This is prediction time. This is what we're going to call this section from now on. We're going to go down the rundown of the, rundown of the games, and we're going to predict each of these games, and we're going to keep up as the season goes, and we're going to have a little competition between me and you to see who can predict these games the best. And we're going to start off with Brentwood at Hendersonville. Who do you have, Tate? I, I hate to do it, but I, I, like I said, Brentwood beat Hendersonville last year. Hendersonville's really, really good. Uh, I think Brentwood's going to keep getting better, but I'm going with Hendersonville. And you know what? I'm going to go against you this time. I'm thinking that uh, Brentwood's going to pull the ultimate upset. They're going to have to be careful, though, because, uh, you know, last year Brentwood pulled off the upset, and Hendersonville's going to be cognizant of that. So it's going to be difficult to do. But they're getting better. They're getting better. So I'm going to go. I'm going to go against you. I'm going to go Brentwood there. I, I hope. You, I hope that you're so, right. So uh, go WCS in that game. Uh, looking down the list here, Centennial versus Clarksville. I think Centennial easy. Uh, I'm going to agree with him. Uh, we're going to get get uh, Coach Rector's going to get going there, and that's going to be an easy win for Centennial. Centennial. So we're going to match head to head there on that. Uh, moving on down, our pick of the week for the best game, uh, Franklin at McGavick. This could be a shootout. So who do you have? I'm going to go with Franklin. Nobody game plans on defense better than Donnie Webb. So he'll dial, he'll dial up a defense. They're not going to shut him out, but he's going to dial up a defense to, to at least keep the points low enough to where Franklin can outscore him. And, and, the Rebels win. And I agree. I think Chris Lowe is way too good of a quarterback right now. He's rolling zero interceptions. Franklin rolls over McGavick. Like uh, moving on, Indian Beach. Independence, not easy. Probably the toughest game uh, of, of any of the uh, of any of the ones that we that I think is going to win. But uh, Beach, very physical. I like Independence's team and Coach Blade. I think they win. I agree. Independence all the way. Tough matchup. Moving on, Ravenwood at Laverne. Ravenwood. I'm going to go Ravenwood as well. Moving on, Summit at West Creek. I'm going with Summit. Coach Coleman gets his first win as the Spartans. Go Sparty. <laughs> Summit gets off the losing trail. And gets their first win of the, of the year against West Creek. Last but not least, Fairview at Creekwood. I'm going with Fairview. Going with Fairview. Go Jackets. Thank you for joining us today on WCS Sports Connection Game Day. I'm your co-host, Jeremy Qualls. This is Tate Matthews. We'll see you next time. Stories the Clone Wars Adventure. I chose this book because it has a lot of action and funny parts in it. And um, one day my mom just got this for me and I liked it. I think lots of people would like this because it has lots of fighting and action and a lot of cool stuff in it. <laughs> Time in school, it pays. Did you know that high school graduates earn more money than those who drop out? If you drop out of high school, you may earn only $18,000 a year. Finish high school and you can add another $8,000 a year to your paycheck. Add up the difference and adults with a high school diploma will earn over a quarter million dollars more than a high school dropout. Time in school, it pays. 
This Choose Success moment has been brought to you by the Middle Tennessee P16 Council.